It is uh, Tuesday the 16th. Uh, my truck is finally fixed. It had an issue when I pulled in on Saturday. Uh, There's an engine light. And, uh, a new message has arrived. New messages. A new message has arrived. And, uh, you have one unread. You have zero new messages. <laughs> to turn that off. Sorry. The um, so I turned. I uh, it was the it was Friday night. So I did, instead of doing a breakdown, what I do is I put in a uh, a message requesting. Well, I'm not gonna. Anyway, I put in a message requesting maintenance um, because I this is a f- facility I frequent often because I live near here. Instead of doing a breakdown, which requires, um, from my understanding, I could have this incorrect, but um, when you put in a breakdown, uh, there's a company called FleetNet that um, works for Maverick After Hours, and they uh, arrange for somebody to come fix your truck. Um, But if you're at a Maverick maintenance facility, like here in Madison, Illinois, you can put in a specific macro on our Omnitrax to request maintenance. Um, at their facility. And since it was Friday, I was like, oh, I got this engine light on that happened like 30 minutes before I got here. And uh, so I knew it was like a, just an electrical issue. It didn't affect the truck in any way. Um, so I got here and, and dropped it off after I put in the uh, request. And that was Friday. And, um, I went home and I got a message on voicemail uh, because they said they'd call me and let me know what's going, what the deal is. They, um, there was a, it needed some kind of wiring harness. So the, in order to accomplish that though, they had to send it to the freight liner. So I'm wondering, this is, uh, in fact, there's a, a gentleman that uh, used my name as a referral and I met him earlier today. Nice guy. Um, Sorry, I get sidetracked. So they uh, sent it to the Freightliner yesterday. Uh, not yesterday, Saturday. And they gave me the uh, information saying it would probably be back on Sunday. Um, but um, as is the case many times, uh, the parts that are required take longer to get in than, than estimated. Obviously, they didn't have this particular wiring harness that they needed. So my truck was not available until today, which is Tuesday the 16th. And I am perfectly fine with that. Um, I think I need to put in a breakdown message because there's Monday and part of today that I couldn't drive because my truck was unavailable due to maintenance issues. So I, I got to remember to do that. Otherwise I'll forget. Um, when I initially got my, I think they were that, um, uh, uh, the people that work here were under the impression that the truck was not going to be available until later today for the Freightliner to actually deliver the truck back here to Madison. So I got a call, and my fleet manager asked me to see if I could drive up there and pick it up or have somebody drop me off there, and so my wife did. And uh, so that was, that was fine. I mean, it's it's only a few miles up the road from here. But the funny thing is, here's the funny thing, the funny thing. Um while driving up I-55, I'm like, hey, I, I'm looking out. I'm driving our truck, and uh, I look out the window, and I'm like, hey, that's a, you know, I always spot Maverick trucks. And I'm like, there's a there's a Maverick truck without a trailer on it. Hmm. Might be coming back from Freightliner. Oh, wow. It's got a 14147 on it. That's my number. So I guess they were, they had the opportunity to bring the truck back to the Madison facility here sooner than anticipated. So my wife and I had a good laugh on that one and uh, turned around and just came here to the, the Madison yard. And they dropped me off. The unfortunate side effect of dropping off your truck that has to go to Freightliner when you have a load on your trailer is that you have to, uh, somebody else is going to have to take your load from you. It's like a, church, a load swap, which isn't necessarily a big deal. But, uh, and I've, I've heard of this happening on occasions. The person who um, took the load from my truck, I, I, I'm assuming that the trailer was just sitting out on, on the yard by itself. So whoever took the uh, load um, just 
connected to it and, and took it to its destination. Probably not realizing that all the gear and securements and tarps that were on uh, the trailer, usually when we do a load swap, we swap over the gear. So long story short, I had to go over to our little shed behind us and pick up a lot of gear. Uh, I, I had to get like chains and over center binders and ratchet binders and coil pads and coil racks and all kinds of stuff. So it's just one of those things that you have to, uh, I guess I have to be um, aware of. And I have no issue with it. I hope I'm not giving that impression. I'm just kind of saying, letting you know how uh, today went. But uh, uh, this trailer I'm hooked up to now, it's I think it's got two brand new lumber tarps in it, which is sweet. Um, cause they fit in there nice and neat, um, when they're folded up for the first time and haven't been used. So here I sit waiting for my wife to, uh, drive back to the Madison yard to pick me up, which she wasn't too keen on. Um, but she should be here shortly. So I reminisce about my day while I wait. And why am I, she coming to pick me up? Um, I got a load assignment. That's where I am in in Madison, Illinois, and that's Roxana, Illinois. And my camera won't focus. It will eventually. But when it does, it'll tell you that it's only 13 miles away. And that 13, Proceed to the highlighted route. 13 miles away doesn't need to be taking place until tomorrow because they don't load today anymore. Um, so my, my assignment that I just got, uh, picks up tomorrow or starts tomorrow and then goes to Memphis, Tennessee. It's only 300 miles away with the next day delivery. I'll have to take a look at the hours for delivery. Let's see. I bet you I can drop off. Seven. No, I won't make it in time. Um, even if I pick it up first thing, it's 7 a.m. from this, uh, it's going to be concrete uh, casket vaults is my, I bet you that's what it is. Because that's what it was last time when I picked up from this company and delivered to the same spot. It's a veteran's, uh, a VA um, uh, burial area in there uh, preparing the ground. So it's, I think it's a good job. But um so I won't make it in time to complete it tomorrow. So, but I stayed somewhere fairly close um, when dropping it off. Let's see the night before. So I had a, a short. I'll have a short day tomorrow, and then drop off first thing in the morning, and then hope I get a new load assignment. So the it's I don't know what forty five degrees. I wish the uh, the Maverick. Sh um, uh, truck wash was open because I'd like to really run my truck through there. It's uh, a bit dirty, but let's see one, two. I'm actually, I just entered the window. Let me see if it'll focus on here. It might take it a little bit, but you can get the gist of it. Sorry, steering wheel's covering my face. The um, I circled the day that I get my truck washed, and then the soonest I can get my truck washed again is two weeks later. And I have to get it washed before the fourth week. So one, two, three. So I four. I have to get it washed before what is that date? The twenty eighth of February. So I could right now, uh, tomorrow, in fact, since I have a short day, run it through um, a glue beacon, and uh, everything will be covered. Um, and my truck will be clean because right now it looks kind of filth like grungy like hey it's been raining it's been warm road salt's been kicked up all over my truck and it looks you know it doesn't look clean and i like it clean um but that's it that's it that's a uh, that's how my tuesday went showed up about two o'clock well i was after two my truck was available at two and uh put everything together got ready to go and uh and like I said, if you don't know this already, there's not a whole lot of freight out of the St. Louis area for the particular company I drive for. So 
Um, no, I don't, I don't fault anybody and I'm not upset about it. I'm going home. Talk to you later.